Hey guys, it's Robert again from Australian Camping and Four Wheel Drives. So uh, today we're going to do a review of different types of solar panels which are available on the market. These are just a small selection of different panels that you can get. And uh, I thought I'd show you what I have here myself. We have another two which we'll have a look at shortly also. Um, but uh, some of the panels we've got sitting here, we've got the uh, ones here, um, the 250 watt ultralight panels, the, the kick-ass panels uh, from Australian Direct. Uh, up top up there behind us we've got the 130 watt, if I remember correctly, 130 watt uh, flat panel and that one there is by Super Cheap Auto. Um, the Super Cheap Auto one uh, comes with, I'll just show you these guys, so they come with your, uh, your charge controller, uh, they come with a set of alligator clips and uh, essentially that then just plugs straight into the, your back of your, um, your panel. These are flexible guys so the whole things can be put wherever you want to. So here we've just tied them onto the side of the tent, whack them on your um, windscreen of your car if you wanted to as well. Uh, that's the other idea what you can do with those ones. So they're, they're quite uh, versatile in the way that you can move them around. One thing you do need to be aware of is like their charge control is not waterproof so uh, you need to take that in, into consideration. Uh, when you're using it you know, in your environment as well. A lot of one that's uh, really popular with a lot of other people as well, hey, they've got uh, these uh, fixed solar panels. Now they're fixed solar panels. These have got legs sitting on the back of them which uh, fold out and, uh, and then they also have on the back here as well the charge controller. So the charge controller sits up top up there and uh, this is generally how you get your, your panels when you get them from super cheap as well. So they've got your two alligator clips and those are essentially attached to your positive and negative of your battery. So this type of setup is designed for somebody who really doesn't you know have much uh, IT knowledge, not IT knowledge, uh, knowledge with electrical stuff and uh, they want to you know get something just up and running so really all you need with this is just your battery and uh, you'll attach your red to your positive and your, your black to your negative and uh, you'll do that that, uh, in that situation. This um, thing's not waterproof so you do need to keep that out of the water guys. Uh, it does have a USB port on it which can be handy. Uh, we've got lots of iPads and iPhones and lots of iDevices these days don't we? And uh, they all seem to take run on uh, USB as well. So uh, this one's 140 watt, uh, it's 70 watts a side. Uh, I do believe Supercheap also make a 130 watt and I think there's also a 160 watt uh, version of these there also. I've seen up on their websites as well. Something like this, you know, it obviously takes up a little bit more space, but it's a lot cheaper, you know, you're looking at a lot less cost than something like this. And there's pros and cons, you know, when you have a flexible panel as to something that's, that's rigid like this. The rigid ones, you know, ne necessarily need to worry much as about wind, whereas with these guys here, you really should tie them down, you know, if it's a windy situation, you should tie something like that down um, so it doesn't get blown over and that type of stuff. I mean, but they've got the advantage in that they're really lightweight and portable. So you essentially just fold the whole things up and uh, off you go off on your trip, you know, they um, hardly take up any space. Something else I, I tried myself, uh, we've got uh, these panels here, we made them, these up ourselves, and uh, these guys here essentially just use um, some of the flexible panels you might have seen out of the marketplace as well, and uh, we just made up a frame, so we went into Bunnings essentially, and uh, we just made up an aluminium frame, and uh, we just put some legs on the back of it, and, uh, and then we put our clips on the back there, and that's designed for attaching to our um, camper trailer. We don't really use these much these days. One thing that they do have that's uh, an advantage to them is they're really light. Um, because they're made out of the aluminium frame, they are very light and uh, they've got the flexible panels on the front. Um, I'm still up in the air about the flexible panels myself. Uh, I think, you know, if you've got some good quality flexible panels, uh, that, that would be a good way of going. I'd, I'd suggest, you know, don't go and get your, um, your cheap panels. Uh, make sure you get something which is um, going to last you. Uh, I've, I've had some of these up on the back of our uh, trailer there at the moment and uh, I'm noticing that some of the, it's deteriorating the, the plastic on the front of it so I think you know if you were just doing you know the odd weekend camping trip and all that type of stuff that would be fine for you to go for but um, I mean if you're doing something that's a bit more long term I'd probably recommend you know, go something like your, your solid panels those things there they're great they do take up more space if you can afford to go up to something like the ultralight panels go something like that 
Well, these guys here, guys, great. They're, they're great as well, hey, because you can just chuck them on the on the bonnet of your car, and um, you can do it that way as well. So I thought I'd have a chat as well, a little bit about um, about uh, solar and, and power as well. So I've, I've written some things down here, which I think you, it would be worthwhile passing on to you guys at the same time, hey. So obviously, look, there's many different types of solar panels out here on the marketplace today, and uh, you can also buy different types of batteries. So you can buy your AGM batteries, you can buy lithium batteries. So I mean, when you're looking at a, uh, a solar setup, the sky's the limit on price, hey. So if you're starting off, you may just want to go for an AGM battery. That's an absorbed glass matte battery, and uh, those batteries are great because you can put them on any old angle most of the time. They don't really care whether you have the battery sideways or not, and um, and uh, they're a lot cheaper than your lithium batteries. Batteries. But your lithium batteries have the advantage in that they're generally around about half the weight of one of your AGM batteries. And they also, the, the, the amount you can draw them down to is around about 80%, so you can go a lot further. Whereas an AGM battery can only tend to go around about 50%. And, um, and uh, the other thing I've noticed as well is the lithium batteries, their lifespan tends to be longer as well. So you tend to get a lot longer life out of them. But you know the cost of them may be you know three, four times as much as an, as an AGM battery. So you really got to consider you know which way is right for you. So what I'm trying to say here is you know if you can afford the lithium stuff and uh, you might want to get like an ultralight panel, go for it. It's a great way of going. Nice, light, portable. You know, but you might not have that type of budget. You know, so something like um, uh, the uh, panels you get here from Super Cheap, the, the ultralight ones that you can put up on your windscreen. That's a really good way of going, guys. Uh, you just need to be careful obviously you know in, in inclement weather not to have your charge controller because they're not really waterproof the charge controllers on those things um, I mean but the other option for you, you know you might want to go for example like something like your, your rigid panels and just do it that way they're not expensive either guys um, uh, super cheap we've got sales on all the time so go and have a look they've got a good range of them online too eh? so go and have a look at that as well the other panel we're going to show you as well in a minute, we actually have the, on the back of our vehicle, so I'll show you another way of mounting them too, and, um, and we'll, we'll compare that as well. So what else we got here as well? So um, the other thing you need to consider when you're looking at a solar panel, you need to consider like what type of current draw you've got on your products. So for example, if you're running a fridge, you need to get some idea of how much current your fridge is going to draw. So you know, before you go shopping for your solar panel and your battery, you might have, for example, like a uh, fridge, you know, it might draw, I don't know, let's say six, seven amps, you know, per hour. Uh, so you've got to work that out. So you say if you had a 120 amp hour battery and you had six to seven amps per hour, you know, and you've only got 50% of that capacity, so that's going to give you 60 amp hours. So you're only work, looking at around about 10 hours, you know, something like that. Whereas you might have a, another type of fridge, like our fridge, we've got uh, one of the ARB fridges, and they are pretty good on current that they draw as well. So uh, we, we had a really low current uh, uh, rating on them when we did our last test on them, and uh, we find that will last us ages, that fridge, it goes really well. The other thing that you need to be aware of as well, when you're looking at lithium batteries, you need to make sure that you size your battery correctly. So um, say, for example, uh, with an AGM battery, uh, if you had uh, like a 120 amp hour battery and you found that wasn't enough capacity, you can generally add on another one and double your capacity. Um, I mean, there's a, a, a couple of little things you really should be putting the same batteries in, but, um, but as long as they're roughly around the same amp hours, you're normally pretty much right on those ones. Lithium batteries, however, are different. You shouldn't really go expanding the, 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 um, them because most of them communicate with each other. So when they, when they sell your lithium battery, they've generally got like a little computer inside and it works out what what the voltage of all the cells are and charges them as appropriate. You'll find if you put two lithium batteries together that they're not going to communicate with each other and what will end up happening in the long term, not initially, but in the long term, one of the batteries will, won't, won't get charged properly whereas the other one will. So uh, it's something you need to consider. They do sell special lithium batteries as well. They actually will uh, accept a charge. Um, uh, uh, no matter what, they've got uh, where they actually will communicate between the two batteries, and you can do that as well. Look, there's lots of really good technologies out there. Have a chat with, uh, you know, who you're going to buy the lithium battery from, and find out about it before you decide to go down that pathway. Also, um, so so yeah, so we've got different types of panels as well. You've got your flexible panels, you've got your rigid panels, and then within those things, hey, um, you've got to consider your know, budget, how much space you've got, uh, how much power is produced by panels, which we've sort of gone over as well and then the other thing you might want to consider as well is uh, the different types of panels so you've got mono crystalline you've got your polycrystalline and you've got your amorphous uh, panels there as well 
So I'll explain briefly what they are. Now, your monocrystalline panels are what you find in most camping situations. So pretty much all these panels here, they're all monocrystalline panels, guys. And um, uh, these panels, they tend to be very uh, black uh, and blue in color. Uh, whereas your, poly, your polycrystalline panels, they tend to be that, have that blue, sorry, uh, color on them instead. So they tend to be really a dark blue. So um, yeah, that's the difference between those ones. Uh, difference between the panels themselves. So your monocrystalline panels tend to produce be more energy efficient uh, than your polycrystalline panels so there's around about two percent roughly more efficiency uh, when you're looking at your monocrystalline panels so you get slightly more from your monocrystalline panels than some poly polycrystalline panels um, monocrystalline panels uh, tend to absorb heat slightly better as well so these things don't really like heat so if you're sticking this on top of your vehicle you need to consider that you've got airflow underneath them as well that if your solar panel starts to heat up it'll actually reduce the efficiency of that panel so you need to make sure you've got nice airflow flying underneath your panel and it keeps the panel cool um, I mean if you're ever out in a, in a desert you can put a bit of water on it and it'll cool it down but uh, you probably want your water for your drinking don't you <laughs> um, so, so really, when we were looking at it, I was sitting here looking at all the differences between these things, and really, the difference between a polycrystalline and a monocrystalline is really just not worthwhile worrying about for the average user. You're not gonna, if you're going camping, it's really not gonna affect you. Maybe if you had a huge array of them, there might be some things there worth considering, but look, for, for the average Joe who's going out camping, it really is not gonna make any difference to you at all. Um, so uh, I was looking at the different panels here as well. The kick-ass ones, they use the uh, sun power uh, monocrystalline cells uh, and they've got a very high efficiency. So even within the different uh, types of panels, they've got different efficiencies and how well they actually work also. Um, so, so when you get your panel, consider you know, how you're going to keep it cool. So like for example, we've got one on the back of our uh, vehicle here and uh, you'll see that it has uh, air that flows straight underneath it. Um, that's one of our the super cheap panels they're really good panel those guys um, that we're using there that panel you could whack it on a caravan on the back of a ute or something like that we put ours up on the back of our ute as well uh, or maybe on, a, on top of a uh, some roof frame that you might have on your vehicle there also um, so look the other thing you're going to consider as well <laughs> is uh, when it comes time to charge your battery see these these are uh, solar panels they put out a higher voltage they don't go straight out to 12 volts so what actually happens is the the, the voltage travels from the panel and then that, that goes up to your um, your uh, regulator and what that regulator does is it reduces the voltage down and normally increases your current at the same time and then charges your battery uh, so that, that's how they work. So um, you'll get the voltage coming out, it'll get it to the, to the right voltage to charge your battery. So generally you should be charging around about 13, 14 volts is the best um, voltage to be charging your batteries at to get them up nice and, on, and, and charge. And then essentially the current drops down your, and your voltage drops down slightly as well. And then they've got like a float stage. So there's about three different stages when you're charging your batteries that you'll, you'll see on most good charge controllers also guys. Um, so the different types of charge controllers, they've got MPPT charge controllers and PWM. So your, your MPPT, they're the charge controllers you really should be going for if you can. They are a little bit dearer. So um, you, if you can get a charge controller, try and get an MPPT charge controller. So they extract the maximum power from the solar panels to charge your batteries. And these can convert excess current to voltage to get the best charge in your batteries. So the other type, which is essentially what you're seeing up here. So up on, on uh, that, that little blue guy, that's actually a PWM charge controller guys and so they actually will charge your battery fine but uh, essentially what that does is it implies the lower it applies the lower amount of uh, power applied to your batteries uh, as they become fully charged so it's it does it in like uh, if you can imagine a, a chart it doesn't have this nice graph going up like that it, it has steps on it uh, that it uses to charge your battery with instead so uh, probably the last thing you really should be considering as well is uh, the cable that you're using for your your unit. So uh, so in our situation, um, uh, we, we use uh, things like we've got. Trying to remember the exact gauge wire. There's a reasonably thick wire, guys. You don't. Essentially, what I'm trying to tell you here is you don't go and get those pencil thin wires and use that to try and charge your setup. If you can imagine um, charging a um, a battery, it's sort of like a pipe, a water pipe. And uh, the 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 larger that pipe, the more water that can flow through it. So that water is is what 
they measure your current in. So the faster that the water can flow there, the higher your current. The other thing you've got to consider as, as well as, as the voltage, and the voltage is like the, the pressure it pushes outwards. So how hard it actually pushes out on, on that pipe. And uh, so um, most things will, will accept most voltages. You shouldn't need to worry about that, but it's, it's mainly going to be your current. So make sure you get some decent wire to actually charge your, your, your setup with as well, guys. So uh, what we're going to do next, we're going to go over and we'll have a look at the, uh, the Ford Ranger, and we'll show you that panel. And we've got one other panel there, which we'll show you briefly also. All right, guys. Okay, hey guys, so uh, this is the 160 watt uh, super cheap panel. And so what we've done in our situation here is we've uh, got some bolts and put that up, up on the, onto the back of our uh, uh, um, Rhino roof rack. And then we've attached it to the bar, which actually goes over the back of this vehicle. And part of the reason we did that, we have had a solar panel up here before, and uh, we noticed that we were essentially losing all our roof space. And uh, so we've got this right at the very end of our uh, Rhino rack um, roof panel, and uh, attached the uh, solar panel up here. So we bolted that down on this side, and uh, essentially just strapped it down at the back there. We strapped it at the back so that um, in this situation, because the, the actual back of the vehicle actually tends to flex a little bit more than the front, you know, they, they tend to move independently. And we just wanted to give it just a little bit of give, you know, just so if it needs it, it can get that as well. So yeah. So um, this panel here, I'll show you how that's hooked up. I've got that plugged into um, our uh, charge controller in this vehicle, and it's doing a beautiful job, guys, uh, really well. Uh, I've even had this uh, vehicle in part shade, and this thing still brings in the, the current for us as well. So it's working very well. I'm very happy with this panel. Um, so yeah, these are available at Super Cheap uh, Auto also, guys. And uh, you'll actually find these in their caravan. They've got um, some caravan solar panels that they use. Uh, so this is perfect, guys. Uh, it comes with the charge controller as well, uh, and as well as your alligator clips. So like if you want to use it as a portable thing, you could do that as well. But uh, yeah, in our situation, uh, we just put this up on the top of our vehicle here, and uh, then we've got the cable going down uh, into the actual uh, unit itself. Now what we do with the car is that super cheap uh, flat panel you saw before, we put that onto our bonnet of our vehicle vehicle here as well and uh, when we do that that essentially allows us to um, have two panels so we've got uh, the 160 watt and then we've got the 130 watt um, uh, super cheap uh, panels of the flexible panels there which we stick on the, the bonnet there as well so that can charge you know the fridge and run it all day for us we don't need, need to worry about that either so uh, I'll show you how we've hooked it up guys so you'll see up there, that's the uh, cables that come out. And essentially what happens for in our situation, we actually have up over here, uh, we have a, another um, Anderson plug, which we can plug in extra panels if we ever want to. And then you'll see the cables just sitting just in up over there. Might be a little bit difficult to see there on the camera, but those cables there, essentially um, uh, those ones there go off down to our batteries. And these guys just sitting up over the side over there, they actually uh, um, come from the solar panel itself. So that's how we've hooked it up in our situation and what we would do is we would plug in up into our Anderson plug and then we would come up the front of the car and then we would pop our, uh, our um, solar panels down the windscreen similar to what we saw before um, uh, with the one over there as well. So these are one of the other types of panels you can get here as well guys. Uh, these ones are manufactured by Kickass also. Um, these are a 200 watt uh, panel that you can use uh, and uh, so one of the guys here has got one of them. Uh, I think one of the things that, um, that he doesn't necessarily like about them is he's saying that they're not necessarily waterproof. Now it's interesting because when you look on the website there it says marine grade and it makes you wonder well you know can you use them in water areas you know like if it rained and all that type of stuff. It's something we're still trying to clarify uh, ourselves we're not 100% certain on it. Uh, these are 200 watts they fold up nice and, and small they're lightweight so similar to like the ones panels that I've got as well to be quite honest. And um, so that's another idea that you could utilize as well. And the kick-ass stuff comes with all the cables and that that you need also, guys. All right, guys, so I hope that's been a, a help to you. Look, uh, hasn't been the most in-depth uh, thing on solar panels, but really more just to give you guys an overview of different types of panels out there, different things for you to consider and all that type of stuff. Um, I hope I was reasonably clear in my, in my explanation of things. It's always a difficult thing to do. Something on camera, isn't it? Hey, it's easy just to talk one-on-one -on -one with people. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments for me. I'm sure I'll, I'll answer them for you. And uh, I had a, a little bit of expertise in, in electrical 12-volt equipment, 
and I'm sure I could probably help you out with your solar panel arrangement as well guys. So uh, uh, also remember um, we do have that competition running so I think it won't be running for much longer. We're almost up to a thousand subscribers I believe uh, at the time we were filming this anyway and uh, so we're going to be drawing that. So go back to uh, the, uh, the last Super Cheap Auto um, one we did there on, on cleaning products and you'll see there's a competition there and enter that in as long as we're below 1,000 subscribers you can enter guys and, uh, and uh, see if you can uh, win the prize, be great. Alright guys, we will catch you guys later.